Now the history of the Scottish borders is often cruel and violent and unjust. But the period of time I want to talk about today is particularly bad. The 1600s, after the border reavers had gone. It was a time that became known as the killing time, for reasons which will become apparent. But people were not fighting over property or wealth or even national boundaries. They were fighting over religion. Now I'm not going to be able to even begin to explain the causes and effects of the religious wars in southern Scotland. But what I am hoping to do today is show you the legacy of these wars, or one legacy of these wars, the most terrible legacy of these wars. And that is mass graves. Mass, unmarked graves of people killed in the name of religion in the Scottish borders that nobody knows about. And I suppose the most famous of the religious battles fought in the Scottish borders and the biggest, the biggest loss of life was at Philippone or Selkirk. So let's go there and have a look. There's a monument somewhere around here to the Battle of Philip Hawke, but it's not very well publicised. <laughs> I think this could be it here, it's rather large. Wow, quite an impressive and neglected sight. What were these religious wars in the Scottish borders all about? If you're like me, when you think of religious wars, you probably think of the Middle East, perhaps Yugoslavia, maybe even the Nazis in World War II. But in the Scottish borders in the 1600s, the persecution and death of people on the basis of religion was rife. It was a real hotspot of religious war in Great Britain. But what was it all about? Well, Catholicism had been all but banished after the Reformation, but it was two forms of Protestantism which were fighting against each other. King Charles wanted to brand the borders in his form of religion, Episcopalian. A religion which put the king at the head of the kirk and gave the bishops great power over the normal working people. But the people of the borders had other ideas. They were strict Presbyterians. They believed that the rule came from God and God alone. The working people elected elders for the kirk and they had a staunch belief that that was the correct system. Swathes of people from all over the borders signed a legally binding document which was known as the Covenant. A contract with God, if you like, to say that their religion was the right one and they were going to stick by it. After this, the Presbyterians became known as the Covenanters. At the Battle of Philip Hall, the Royalist army of the King led by the Marquis of Montrose, who had won many battles against the Covenanters in Scotland already, marched into the borders on a final push to eradicate Covenanting in Scotland. They thought they would get support from the border people, but they got none, and they were ill-equipped for a fight with the Covenanter army of the Scottish borders, which was coming north from previous fights in Newcastle.
the Royalist Army of Montrose camped out near here at Philip Hawk, close to Selkirk. They were hell bent on destroying the Covenanters and their religion in Scotland and the Scottish borders. They knew that the Covenanter army was approaching, but what they probably didn't know was that the Covenanters were almost three or four times in numbers. There were roughly a thousand Royalists. The Covenanters were somewhere between three and four thousand. On the morning of the 13th of September 1645, the Covenanter forces reached here, Philip Hawk and Selkirk. They took the Royalist forces by surprise and the outcome was inevitable. A mass slaughter of the Royalist forces. The Royalist forces were mainly made up of Highlanders and Irishmen. But somewhere in this vicinity, the battle ensued. What happened? Two thousands of bodies of Irishmen and Highlanders that were killed on this site that day. Nobody knows for certain, but the trees and bushes at the end of this football pitch here may hold a few dark secrets. You see, this ditch here is the only real plausible place in the entire Philip Hall estate for a mass grave of soldiers from the battle. You see that amount, that volume of dead soldiers that weren't from this area must have been bundled into a mass grave somewhere. And the only real evidence which backs that up is this trench here between the current day Philip Hawk football pitches and the agriculture. Over the years, the thousands of corpses have rotted away and the ground has taken this indentation. Completely unnatural indentation. I can't think of any other reason why it's here. There is actually a plaque here to remember the Battle of Philip Hall, right in front of this alleged mass grave. But it doesn't say anything here about this being a mass grave. I expect that's maybe a bit too gruesome for the tourist trail. But the men that died on the field here at Philip Hall were not the only casualties. Hundreds of other prisoners were taken. But where did they go and what happened to them? Prisoners who survived were brought here. 
thought they were going to get safe passage to New York Tower. Unfortunately for them, New York Tower was not a place of hospitality and peace. This was a place built for war. You can tell by the th thickness of the walls around it. And the gun ports everywhere. After a few days, all of the prisoners, more than a hundred men, were brought out into the courtyard here. They were shown no mercy. They were all shot and killed in cold blood. But these men were not given a ceremonial burial in a churchyard somewhere. Quite the opposite. Just as at Philip Hawk, they were bundled in a mass grave. But we are. And that brings me to my next mass grave. And this one's a little bit more definitive. Why is that? It's because it's still on the maps. It's on the Ordnance Survey map. And it's on ancient maps as well. And it's known as Slain Men's Lee. There's not much to see here now at all. It's just a tranquil country scene. A lovely wee glen going down to the river. But four nine metre long pits have been excavated in here and over a hundred human remains were found in these pits. The Irishmen who were killed at Newark were brought down here half a mile roughly from Newark and buried in a pit and forgotten about. So next time you're out for a walk in the countryside here just remember the horrors that went on. After the Battle of Philip Hall, it was the Covenanters themselves who became the persecuted. King Charles wanted to rid the country of them and the religion. And Presbyterian services were outlawed. The Scottish Borders was the real heart of Presbyterianism in Scotland. So the preachers took to outdoor services known as conventicles. And these happened everywhere, but they were illegal. And this place here, in the Ettrick Valley, was a real common place for conventicles to happen. Spot I'm at just now, where Bailey's Burn meets the River Ettrick, is the site of what was thought to be an old wives tale about the Covenanters and the horrific thing that happened here. Yeah, because just near the site 
on the little burn there, there is a place known as Prison Linz. And at Prison Linz in 1680, a group of Royalist enforcement officers broke up one of these conventicles. Every one of the Covenanters at that meeting was murdered and buried on the spot. Or so the story goes. But there's no evidence. Or so we thought. Let's go and see if we can find the site of Prison Linz. I don't know what it is about this place, it's quite a sort of eerie place. Let's go and find these prison winds. It's a very common tale told at schools and places around this valley, but like I say, it's always been thought to have been some sort of make-believe. Is there another mass grave here? It's not exactly the most accessible place and it does have that kind of fairy, magic, spooky feel to it. Ah! Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is it here. Prison Linz, you can hear the rumble of the little waterfalls there in this really deep hollow where hundreds of Covenanters had gathered to hear a sermon that day. They thought it was safe, they thought they were under cover of the hills. But the Royalist forces found them, shot them all dead here, and they were buried on the spot somewhere. Apparently this is the site of a mass grave, but it's just an old wives' tale. Or is it? <laughs> but recent records have just been uncovered for this area from 1810, a good 150 years after the event, which chart a great flood that swept down this valley. And with that flood were washed down hundreds of human skulls. Does it prove the story of the Covenanters being murdered here and put in a mass grave? I think it does. So there you go, proof if any more was needed of the religious persecution that happened in the Scottish borders and the number of mass graves, unmarked mass graves which exist here. If you know of any more mass graves that are unknown, please comment. If you know of any mass graves, please comment. It's probably one of the darkest questions ever posed to viewers on YouTube. <laughs>